Hey guys, Gathering Magic back again. Daily Rewards Claim for Tuesday. I'm going to open uh, the chest on my main account, on my alt account. I um, have a couple packs to open. And then, of course, have to talk about all the news and events that uh, transpired yesterday in the town hall and all the changes going forward and just my thoughts on the situation. So we'll get into that in a couple minutes, but let's start with uh, the daily opening. So we've got five silver chests on my main account. I am up to nine gold chests for the season. Finally managed to push back into silver one, so I should be getting a decent amount of uh, focus points for tomorrow. So hopefully I can get more into the six to eight chest range every day from a main account. So uh, this account, of course, I need pretty much everything. So I still do need uh, summoners. Um, of course, any gold cards, epics, legendaries, all that good deal. So any cards will be greatly appreciated. So let's get started. Wow, so that's a great way to start. Uh, get a gold summoner. So there's the gold death summoner. 0.6 SPS, 3 Ferox Defenders, 0.15 SPS, and finishing with 2 Dry Bone Barbarians. So always glad to get a gold summoner. So let's take a look. That might be the first gold summoner I have on this account. I'm not sure. I might have the fire one, but I'm pretty positive I did not have the dust summoner. So let's go ahead and look at old soulbound. Let's look at chaos legion, and let's look at gold. Okay, so I have yep. So that's my first Octavia shadow meld in gold, and also have one for the fire summoner. So very cool. Now let's take a look at commons, and let's just look at regular foil. don't think there's anything I can combine yet. Well, maybe the Defender. Yes, looks like I might be able to get the Defender to level 5. So let's combine him. Yep, so he is level 5, so he is now max for silver. So don't need any more copies of this card. So he's at level 5, Firecaller is 5, Swamp Spitter, I still need, what is it, 30? I still need 30 copies of him to get him to level 5. Uh, 12 more of the Sentry, that one's level 5, so we're getting closer. Looks like just a couple Possessed Puppets, so rounding out the commons, at least for the Soulbound Reward cards. Um, as far as Summoners and Rares go, as you can see, the Fire one I have at level 3, Water is only 2. I actually only have level one for the Earth Summoner. Need one more of him. Uh, Octavia Shadow Melts, level two regular foil. Now I have the gold, so still have quite a ways to go to get these two max silver. Uh, let's go ahead and check the SPS. So I just claimed my SPS uh, for the day and for the Guild Brawls right before I recorded the video. Um, as you can see, my SPS right now is just a little over 27,500. Uh, the SPS price is just a little over one and a half cents um, doing my 10% uh, strategy. Right now, the two prices that I'm looking at to either buy or sell, if SPS falls to 1.46 cents, I'll go ahead and buy 10% more of my bag. Um, if the price rises to 1.78 cents, I will actually sell 5% of my SPS. Uh, probably what I'll do when I sell is I will convert that SPS to DEC since DEC is so far under peg. Um, that way I think that will stay pretty stable. If DEC does go up, then I will actually uh, make a little bit of return on that SPS that I converted over. So that's my strategy um, right now for SPS. Just kind of hang tight, see where the price is going to go, and then either buy or sell accordingly. Uh, let's go ahead and open a pack. I did not manage to get enough merits to get a Gladius case, uh, but recently I managed to scrape up enough uh, funds from Gollum Overlord and Splinter Forge and that to get a Chaos Legion pack. So we're going to go ahead and open that right now. Still need a ton of Chaos Legion cards to get everything max, so of course any legendary would be greatly appreciated. Any gold cards, just see what we get. Okay, we'll just start at the top. So I've got a Venari Scout and a Venari Knifer, Carrion Shade, Antoid Platoon. That's a good card. I know I need to level that. And my Celic Slip Spawn. 
So those are our five cards. Um, Rift Watcher packs, I'm saving these. I think Rift Watchers is a fantastic set. I want to get some more cards, but I definitely want to have some uh, packs set aside for the future. So I'm going to start building up a um, stack of Rift Watcher cards. So let's go ahead and log out. Head on over to the alt account. I believe I have 10 bronze chests to open. And I want to get your guys' feedback on what I should do with some of my DEC funds that I have. But first, let's go ahead and open these chests. So we have 10 chests. We're up to 41 for the season. Go ahead and claim these. So currently I'm in bronze 1. Rating's over 1,000. So I'm going to stay in bronze just so I can get a decent amount of chests every day. Debating whether I should push into silver on the last day so that next um, season I will be collecting silver chests instead of bronze. Uh, let me know what you guys uh, suggest in the comments. Should I stay in bronze and just keep getting a ton of bronze end of season chests? Or should I push into silver and get fewer chests um, end of next season, but they will be silver? So I will have a chance of getting uh, multiple cards per chest and maybe a slightly better chance of getting gold or legendaries. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. But let's get started with these. There's a Dumaki Orc, a little bit of SVS. So right now for these, I'm basically just looking for epics and higher. I'm pretty much set on the commons and rares. There's a summoner, nice to see. Legendary potion, a little more SPS, seven merits, and another summoner. So good opening, got three cards, which is right about average, and got two summoners. So let me make note of that. So 10 more chests. Three cards, so 643 cards so far, out of 2,057 bronze chests, and we got the Death Summoner and the Life Summoner. Okay, so I have a little over 6,000 uh, Dark Energy Crystals. A couple things I was looking at doing, I want to get uh, your guys' feedback on what you would suggest that I do. Uh, one thing I was thinking of doing for my collection is uh, a few weeks ago I pulled an Immortalis from a pack and was thinking of maybe selling that card. I think currently it goes for, I think it's around $12. I think the price has gone down. Let's take a look. Let's look at summoners. So Immortalis is sitting right about $12. Now what I was thinking of doing is selling that card and then grabbing some gold summoners, because some of the gold summoners are very cheap, especially like Kelia. So the two splinters that I play the most are Water and Death. So if I sold that card for $12, that would give me enough money to get a gold foil Kelia and a gold foil Thaddeus Brood, which I use all the time in ranked battles. So these would give me a permanent 10% uh, reward share boost for all my wins. Is that something that I should consider doing? Now, I already have both of these cards in regular foil um, at level 2 um, for a max bronze deck. So should I go ahead and get the gold summoners, or should I concentrate on other gold cards? So if I don't get those summoners, uh, what I was thinking of doing is getting uh, gold foil commons to just kind of boost my deck and give me the 10% bonus for cards that I play all the time. I do have a couple of them. Um, like you guys know, I have Silent Chevy, I have Deep Lurker, I have Stitch Leech. Uh, I was looking at picking up maybe Chaos Agent. I use that card a lot. Uh, maybe the Crystal Smith. Uh, what are some other ones? Let me just look at the commons right now. Uh, another card that I use all the time is Scavo Hireling. So he's a dollar and a half. I could pick him up. I use him a lot. Um, this would increase his speed, which would help me in Splinter Forge so that he would repair more often. Um, so let me know in the comments, should I go for gold commons? Well, first of all, do you guys think I should sell Immortalis or just hang on to the card? And if I do sell it, um, what kind of card should I target? Uh, right now I have um, 6,500 DEC, so I could pick up a few cards. They don't have to be gold. Um, as you guys know, I've also been looking at some beta and untamed cards. I could actually maybe pick up some um, summoners maybe from beta 
I do have one copy of uh, Zintar Mortalis. Um, should I look at picking up maybe a Dragon Summoner? Um, you know, I could get him basically pretty cheap for a buck. That way I've got a Dragon Summoner to play. Just some suggestions on what cards you think I should target uh, for my $10 account would be greatly appreciated. Uh, Gedford does not have a Chaos Legion pack to open, but he does have a Gladius case. So let's go ahead and open that. So you can see I'm very low on potions for opening uh, packs if I did get some Chaos Legion packs. Okay, so let's see what we get here. So we've got Helmets, Isgald, good card. Chimney Wall Stop, use him a lot. Whistling Daemon, and we have an Epic. Marisol, I think this is the Epic I got last time. Marisol uh, Contuma, I believe it's pronounced. So good to get an Epic card. Let's take a look at the collection of Gladius cards. So let's look at Gladius. Let's check out Epic. Yep, so I have three of those, so one more and I can actually level that to two. Don't really play white a whole lot, don't play life, but looks like a very powerful card, and especially in that reach position, having all that attack. Um, another thing I was thinking about too, doing too, um, would appreciate your guys' feedback, is if I'm not really going to level these cards or use my Gladius cards, especially like the epics, I could burn these for DEC and then use that DEC to grab uh, cards that I'm going to use more in rank battles. So for example, if I just wanted one copy of this guy, I could burn the other two, get 400 DEC, and put that towards funds to grabbing um, some other cards off the market. So just let me know um, your guys' thoughts on that. Okay, so now for the big news from yesterday. Um, I'm sure you guys know everyone has covered it. Um, the reductions that they had to do in the staffing, the restructuring, uh, basically, Matt taking over Splinterlands and Aggie taking over uh, the other new company, which is Invenium Corp, which will include Genesis League Sports. Um, I'm sure it was a tough decision, but I think it's one that needed to be made. Um, I totally agree. I just listened to the town hall with Matt. I was at work yesterday when the town hall uh, was live, so I worked second shift, so by the time I got home, it was late at night, and everyone was talking about it, and I'm like, okay, I really need to catch up on the town hall, find out all the news, what exactly the details were, so finish the town hall and listen to it, and I agree a lot of uh, what Matt was talking about moving forward. Um, I think a lot of people shared the same sentiment where they didn't have very much focus, they were split, trying to do too many projects in once, getting pulled in too many directions, um, I also got the sense too of you know Matt's frustration and um, just his talk about how him and uh, Aggie would butt heads over a lot of different things. So I, I think this is for the best. Um, the main thing is they are both part of the community. Um, they are both now part of their own uh, separate entities uh, going forward. I think um, Matt can now stay uh, laser focused on Splinterlands. And I love the fact that he said, okay, we're going to, the very first thing we're gonna do we're going to get funding taken care of moving forward. You know, he's going to get some outside capital to come in, probably invest in the game, probably um, give them some funds up front, uh, maybe for like, uh, you know, maybe a part ownership type thing um, of Steam Monsters. Um, basically, he wants to make sure that this never happens again, that their runway is secured, uh, whether they sell another product or not, uh, that they always have funds available moving forward. Uh, the other part that I really liked of, about what he talked about was the fact that, okay, we're, we're going to get land out. We're going to get land out. We're going to get rebellion out. Um, we're, we're going to get projects that we've talked about for so long done. Once those are done and complete, then we'll talk about, you know, new projects and, and new patches going forward. Um, it does sound like land is going to be um, put out basically as the, I don't know what you want to call them, stages are, are completed. So once 1.5 is done, it's released. As soon as they have a next, like 1.6, that's going to be released. They're not going to try to get, you know, everything done all at once for 2.0, and then there's nothing between 1.5 and 2.0. They're, they're going to get, as, as land is um, worked on and new features are added, they're going to release those. And it's it might be something as often as maybe 
uh, once or twice a month when they do their Tuesday updates. Um, they might release, you know, a little more of land piece by piece. So very excited for that. I think that'll keep the, the land ex um, expansion uh, fresh. You know, it'll keep uh, players interested. Um, one of my concerns about land 1.5 was, okay, it's, it's setting the groundwork for everything, but there's actually not that much you're going to be able to do. I mean, once you get your uh, monster staked on your land, you determine what building you're going to build. Basically, you just sit back and wait till you can harvest. Either harvest your grain, your research tokens, or uh, SPS. So my, my concern was if there's a long amount of time between 1.5 and the next phase of land, you may get a lot of people just kind of get bored again and maybe some more people leave the game, you know, as they wait another month or two months or three months, you know, for the next phase of land to come out. So it sounds like that's not going to happen. It's going to be more land is uh, released in small amounts, you know, over a greater frequency of time. So going forward, I think that's a good thing. Um, talked a little bit about uh, Rebellion. I think this is huge. Um, just the fact that the Dow and... Um, Steam Monsters are basically going to split the profits 50-50. You know, the team's going to get the $250,000 up front just for some kind of funding, just to help their finances, you know, help with development costs and all that. It's a huge, huge win, I think, for the DAO um, to be able to get a multiples of return on that $250,000 investment based on the pack sales. So if they sell packs for $4 a piece, you know, for every million packs they sell, you know, half of that's going to go to the Dow. So, you know, $4 a pack, if you sell a million packs, 4 million bucks, 2 million goes to the Dow, 2 million goes to Steam Monsters. So 1 million packs um, being sold, I think is, it, I think they're going to far exceed that. So I, I think it's a win for both sides going forward. Um, Another thing he talked about briefly, it may have been kind of overlooked with all the, the focus being on the, the layoffs and the team downsizing, is um, the new game me mechanics that will be part of Rebellion. Uh, kind of excited to see what those are. My feeling is the new mechanic is probably going to be the first example we may see of items and spells coming into the game on a very basic level, um, just to give um, players a chance to see how it will look going forward. Uh, when land is finally completed and we're able to create our own items and spells. So I think they're probably going to have, as part of this new mechanic, a new phase in the game, where after your teams are both submitted, there might be some last-minute changes you can make to your lineup. Uh, one kind of exciting thing that Matt gave as an example would be something that maybe doesn't make a lot of sense, but maybe you want to debuff your team if you notice, like, say, for example, all of your team has five or more damage, the opponent has um, force field, um, you may want to debuff your team down to four so that you can kind of avoid the uh, the force field that the other team has. So I think this will add a, a exciting new uh, dynamic to the game, whatever this new uh, game mechanic is. Anything they can do to change the game, uh, to make it more fresh and exciting, harder for bots to kind of figure it out, I think that is a good thing going forward. Um, I definitely could sense in Matt's voice at the beginning of the town hall his uh, frustration um, I'm uh, just with the way things turned out, but I am very uh, positive on his vision for the future, his outlook, his passion for the game. And one thing he mentioned briefly, of course, he cannot make any guarantees, but I think at some point in the future, some of the people that were um, let go will be back uh, in the Splinterlands team at some point in the future. Um, I don't think we've seen the last of Weirdbeard. Um, I think he's too much of a vital part of the organization. Um, just my personal feeling is I think at some point he will be back in some way, shape, or form, and um, I really hope he comes back. Um, big fan of Weird Beard, uh, big fan of a lot of the team that we have gotten to see and known on the town hall, just their, their, their passion, their commitment to the project, and just the depth of their character. So I think a lot of the people that got low, let go will probably uh, be back in some way, shape, or form. So there you have it, guys. Um, just my uh, my thoughts on all that. Um, going to wrap this up real quick. Let's just take a really quick look at the market. Um, another thing I thought of when I got home last night was, okay, after this announcement of all the layoffs and, and cuts and kind of all the, kind of the sad news, um, was there like a major dump in crypto? Was there a major dump in uh, Splinterlands assets? And things are holding pretty steady. Um, 
One thing that I have really looked at too is DEC, with DEC now being down to basically seven tenths of peg, uh, picking up some more DEC. So I think I'm going to do that um, in the near future. Um, as you guys know, I've been selling some of my physical Magic the Gathering cards, putting some funds together. So I think I am going to invest some more into DEC. Um, going forward, when land comes out, I plan on buying a ton of time crystals and just having DEC set aside, um, not just for land and for monster staking, but also for whatever features may uh, be involved in land that requires DEC. So I want to get as much DEC as I can, so that's my plan. Um, SPS, I think I talked about this briefly. Uh, we're getting close to my next buy price. So if this drops down to 0 0.0146, I will be buying another uh, probably close to 2,800 SPS and adding that to my bag. Chaos Legion packs, um, I still need to get more Chaos Legion. Um, if I'm able to, uh, with Gedfer, with my $10 account, I might pick up a pack or two. But right now what I want to concentrate on are singles, getting the specific singles I need. Um, as I said earlier, would love your guys' feedback. Should I go for uh, the Gold Summoners, since I'm going to use them all the time, they'll give me that 10% bonus. Or should I target other cards because I already have those summoners um, at max bronze? So please let me know your feedback on that. Uh, other things to look at, alpha packs. I love alpha packs. $55 is a steal, but there's just too much, too many other things going on right now. I'm not really concerned about alpha packs. You know, I, I really want to con concentrate more on DEC and SPS and, and Rift Watchers and those type of things. Uh, GLX token, it's going to be interesting to see going forward um, Aggie's uh, vision now for GLX on the platform um, and how GLX moves ahead going forward, how um, the Genesis League sports platform performs, um, if they have new partnerships once the soccer game comes out, are they going to get any kind of a partnership with other uh, major sports um, companies? Will they eventually get some kind of sponsorship with the NBA? or college basketball or baseball, you know, any partnership like that, I think could just explode this price. But until then, you know, I'm just restaking uh, the GLX I have. We're just going to wait and see. Uh, part token, I've been getting more um, more into uh, Gollum Overlord as part of kind of like just like a little passive income machine, even with the part token being this low. Um, if I can get to the point where I can generate, you know, several hundred part every day, uh, take some of it out, you know, a few cents here, a few cents there. I can put that into some other assets that are cheap. You know, I can put it into DEC. Um, I can put it into a little bit of SPS, or I can put it into another uh, Splinterlands asset that I really love that you guys know are vouchers. Um, I think right now I have about 2,300 vouchers. Um, would love to have 10 times that. So if I can um, start taking some of my uh, part token, and just funneling that and just swapping it out to, you know, 10 vouchers here, 10 vouchers there. Would love to do that. Um, finally, let's talk about Rift Watchers. You guys know I love Rift Watchers. The packs are, I think, a fantastic long-term hold, especially with them being burned. When people realize how rare the last two airdrops are, if they turn out to be uh, meta cards, game changers, and everybody wants them, I think everybody's going to be buying uh, Rift Watcher packs, you know, in the last, I don't know, 100,000, couple hundred thousand packs are just going to disappear very, very quickly. Uh, my prediction is, and I might be wrong, I probably am wrong, but I think uh, Rift Watchers may surprise people and sell out by end of October, early November, um, if those airdrops turn out to be huge and uh, people kind of catch on to how rare these cards actually are. And the last token I want to talk about is Forge Gym. Um, yes, I still am playing Splinter Forge. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to play um, my one account, the Common Hero, uh, especially now that the Forge Gym uh, rewards have been greatly reduced. Um, pretty much the only Forge Gym you get in any significant amount now is if you end up on the leaderboard. Um, just a lot of things going on um, just with work and uh, just other commitments, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to play um, as much Splinter Forge and Splinterlands as I would like. But yes, I still am very bullish on uh, Splinter Forge. Love the game. It is in its alpha stage, pretty much. I know the graphics aren't the greatest, <clears throat> but they are working on new game modes. The Electro Mine Run is out. They're working on a hero leveling system. 
very positive on Forge and Forgeum going forward. So we'll continue to play. As you guys know my saying, I am staying the course and keep on forging. Yep, and Forgeum is a part of that. So there you have it, guys. I'm sorry for kind of a long video. haven't had a chance to really just sit down and, and talk to you guys in a while and just tell you my thoughts on, on the game, um, how my accounts are doing. Um, like I said, please give me um, some feedback for my $10 account on what you think I should go for next as far as building my deck, uh, gold foil summoners, other gold cards, or just uh, like beta untamed, that kind of thing. So as always, appreciate your feedback. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being a subscriber. Uh, let me know any topics you'd like me to cover in, in the future. And all I can say with all the announcements yesterday, I'm still extremely positive for Splinterlands. Now, my heart goes out to the people that were let go, um, but as far as the game and the community go, I still see nothing but good times ahead. You're going to have rough days like this. You're going to have good times and bad times, but I think overall the trajectory for Splinterlands is, is going to be on the up and up and it's just going to get better and better as time goes by. So very excited to see what um, happens at the end of 2023. Uh, when 1.5 comes out, <clears throat> maybe some more small updates for land. Uh, Rebellion comes out. I think there's a lot of exciting and good things in the future for Splinterland. So as always, guys, thank you so much for, um, for all you do, for all the comments. Thank you for being a part of this community. And remember, stay the course, keep on forging, and now enjoy the ride. Take care.